Welcome to Vegas Circle with Packy and Chris. And today, joining the circle with us, we're excited to have a Las Vegas native who's an entrepreneur and co-founder of Classic Jewel, that is a cocktail lounge in downtown Las Vegas. One of the nicest lounges. I went and checked it out last week. So we got Miss Ryan Brown. I appreciate you joining the circle. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We're going to start from the beginning with you. So before you got into business, you, you kind of had some really cool jobs. First, you started off with the Atlanta Spirit down south. I did. I did. I was always a, a pretty big sports fan, but I knew that I was not. <laughs> I was not meant to be on anyone's field, anyone's court, but I just try to figure out, you know, how I could get into the business. So right. after school, um, I'm a Sun Devil. I graduated from Arizona State. And after that, the way the process works when you want to get into sports, if you're not an athlete, the easiest way to get in is through sales. That's pretty much the for sure way to get in. And um, what they do, the NBA, the NHL, WNBA, they have a pretty cool recruiting program. And what they do is you pretty much apply to all the teams at once. And they invite you out. And pretty much it's kind of like uh, they court you. You do a bunch of little interviews. Then they kind of decide, you know, who they want to interview back. The next day you go to dinners. Um, And it was a pretty cool experience right out of college being courted in that way. Atlanta was the most popping city yeah, yeah, <laughs> to yeah. offer me a job and to be able to work in uh, for an NBA team and an NHL team was like, to me, that was something I was not going to be able to experience in any other city. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's a hell of an experience, man, especially getting out of college, be able to hit that. That's like a, a straight up home run, you know, right yeah. off the bat. Which it is was. Great. Were you doing actually sales with the team? Is that what you I ended was. up transitioning to? I was. So I started off in inside sales, and that's pretty much. And, and the, they're, they're very smart. Uh, they get you in young because I know that you can put in the, the, the hours you're coming in early, you're staying late, and then also you have games, right? So between the NBA games and the NHL games, they're during the same season. So it was pretty exhausting, but, I mean, it's fun. You know, if you, if you want to get in, that's the way to go. So eventually it went from – sales into more of like the like the event side of things so that's where you leverage like the player experiences and just kind of transition from there but in order to kind of get your foot in the door sales is the way to go that's Mm -hmm. awesome and you kind of transition so you actually moved from atlanta to the big apple and worked for iheart radio i did i did so iheart has many umbrellas i mean excuse me it's one umbrella but it has so many different facets from you know media uh, to iHeartRadio, and then also within that, there are smaller companies under that umbrella. So I worked for a company called Cats, which is, it's pretty much, I guess, the if you're looking at like Walmart, like the Sam's Club, Got if it. that makes okay. sense. So the same company, but a division of. Got it. Okay. So that was a cool experience living in New York. Did you like living in New York City? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. But I, but I timed out. So like New York is one of those places where, I mean, you really don't stop. You go there for the energy. It was very intimidating at first. Yeah. Coming from it moves the fast. Yeah. It moves very fast. But I had just, so leaving Atlanta, I had just gotten in the swing of like, you know, speaking to everyone all the time. You know, the, the South has different rules. So I had just kind of gotten those down. And then I go to New York and I'm trying to be friendly and they're looking at me like, <laughs> Girl, who are you? It's too early. You know, like, do we know you? Can we help you with something? So it was a quick transition. But New York is is by far the most amazing place. I mean, if you are trying to get in the ad business, which that was the industry I'm in, in order to kind of speed things along, you you're basically your goal is to get to New York City as fast as possible. Yeah, that's a huge market. Absolutely huge market, especially in advertising and everything that they're doing out there and pretty much all the companies are there for sure for media. Mm -hmm. So how are you dealing with all this COVID-19 craziness, man? Well, (laughs) with cocktails. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Spark (laughs) it. Definitely with cocktails. As you can see, I've got the whole place to myself, which I definitely don't like. uh, That's for sure. But it's important right now for us to, you know, just follow the guidance that's that's out there. It's very frustrating. Being in the bar business right now is very challenging. I'm sure my counterparts and other bars are feeling the pain right now. We just had an inspection today, so we got the green light for food. So we will be opening back up very, very awesome. soon. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, the end of the week. Yeah, so that that's good. But, you know, it's, it's the community that keeps us afloat, honestly. We are in a very unique position for a bar. 
because we do so much, you know, as it relates to the community, whether it's fundraising, political events, nonprofits, events for women, events for people of color. We, you know, sponsor different events. This weekend, we had uh, the bike ride with Quiet Storm, the Peace Oh, that's Earth right, yeah. Fest. Yeah, yeah. CJ Watson, that's yeah. my guy. Yeah, CJ, great dude, great family. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we grew up together and I've known, you know, the Watsons for many, many years. So it's really nice to kind of see things come full circle. My neighbor here at Jewel Gary is the one who organized that. And it's just really nice to have a, a community that thinks about you more than just a cocktail. They yeah. want to, you know, people bring their parents here to meet us. <laughs> like, I don't really know many other bars that have like, you know, grandmas and granddaughters coming out for live music. We're so diverse, which is something that I've seen a lot in New York. I've seen a lot in L.A. Vegas, we're getting there. But this is a, a really cool space because we get so many transplants from Chicago, Miami, and they, they love these holes in the wall. Like, the, this is what they're used to. Yeah. You're 100% right. I'm originally from Chicago. So it's, okay. you're 100% right. You get that vibe when you go there. And it's funny, I was hearing about your lounge for many years, and I apologize, I had never went, you know, and I had heard about it from, from Stacey Dugan and on Simply Pure. You know, I've heard it from multiple different people that, that are not just down there to have businesses there, but they were just talking about places that you don't want to just be on the strip spending a ridiculous amount of overpriced money. You want to go and enjoy and be around you know, locals a lot of times. And then if there's different events that are going on, then you can go and do that. And that's pretty cool about yours. Like I saw you guys had Biz Marquee DJing. You had oh, yeah. <laughs> Teddy Riley just recently. I saw Teddy Riley at Earthquake before mm-hmm. all this craziness. Joe but Biden, before, Vice President yeah, Joe Biden saw, came that, through. That's what I wanted to ask you. So, um, so you guys do a lot of different events. I saw, before we were talking about Joe Biden, I wanted to see you had Governor Sisolak there and I want to mm-hmm. say Cory Booker was, mm-hmm. was recently there, right? What event were they doing? Was that a fundraiser that, that they were so doing? Was, or? No, so it was actually, I believe it was a Steve Horford's event. It was a, a family friend and a huge supporter, like we are of his also. And I'm pretty sure that he had brought them down. I believe Jackie Rosen may have been down that same day. One really good thing about Vegas being so small is it's kind of easy to find us. You know, it's easy. If you're, if you're really trying to talk to people that look like us, if you're trying to talk to, you know, young people, people that are progressive, open-minded, yeah. this is the spot to come to. And it doesn't matter what you look like. Hmm. What I like about uh, Classic Jewel is I, I feel like what bonds us is more of like like-mindedness. Because I like to say it was, you know, folks just really coming to support a black owned business. But really, I think people are just used to, they, they want to be around people that are different from them. People want perspective. They want to have a cocktail and learn about their, their local elected officials. You know, they want to know what's going on. And um, my, my business partner, Jerome, was also awesome, awesome. He's married to my mother, Cherie, who's uh, owned Vegas Living Realty. So we keep it pretty tight. So I feel like most of the time when we get those calls, it's either, you know, Rome will get the call or I'll get the call. There's a reason why they want to come here. It's not just for the drink. So yeah. the fact that the community keeps calling on us, it just lets us know that, you know, we're doing something right. Uh, yeah. It sounds like you're kind of getting to a point where you're like hitting your stride. You're getting all this crazy momentum going on. And then all of a sudden you get hit with the uncertainty and, you know, kind of the whole COVID battle we're all dealing with right now. How are you kind of navigating that in your plan to like transition away from it and just get back to? Yeah, ground? I'm glad that you asked, Chris. I'm glad that you asked because it is a transition and it's very humbling. You know, when you're celebrating five years of business and, you know, we've all sacrificed a lot, myself and my partners, you know, to open up the business. And so it is, you know, it does affect your ego. It affects your pockets. Um, it affects your spirit a little bit. But I think the biggest thing is always trying to reinvent yourself always trying to remain relevant, always trying to figure out, okay, well, what is the community asking for? Not necessarily what we want, but what do they need? What are they looking for? And I think that's honestly how we stay relevant. I mean, we can't really control this disease at all. (laughs) We see our, our elected officials doing, you know, the best they can to bring us the information from Washington. But for the most part, it's just really sticking together, being smart about how we spend our money. I'm a big supporter of Simply Pure. Like you mentioned, Stacey, earlier, I'm a big supporter of EAT. You know, I just want to always support the, the, the downtown spots. I think that's how we kind of get through this together. 
when you spend a dollar here at Classic Jewel, it feels different. You know, it feels different on your end. It feels different on our end. And there's so many businesses that are doing well. There's a lot of businesses that are struggling, but we know that small businesses, this is what keeps the community going. So I think that as long as people, yeah, as long as people understand that that's activism and how you spend your money. So if you, you know, if you don't like the way something is, or if you want to see a, a business survive or thrive, you directly have that power. So just letting folks know that we need you to make this turn um, outside of the, you know, the health things that we put in place, you know, the hand sanitizers all over the bar, social distancing. I mean, we're doing all of that, but really it's the community that's going to be the one to keep us afloat. You know what I love, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, and I, and I was reading about, um, you guys kind of have this cheers bar concept, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. I, I hadn't heard that in a while, you know, in Vegas in, in general. You know, you I, might hear it in other cities, but it's cool that you guys have that where it, it sounded like a lot of people that lived in the building or lived in the area, they're just walking there. That's a powerful thing to be able to have happen, you know, especially with all the positive things that are happening downtown, you know, Las Vegas. I love it with all the first Fridays and everything that they're doing, spending money. It's, it's a really, really great thing to see down there. For sure. Oh yeah, it feels good. And in, in most cities that you go to, the heart is downtown. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we live in such a unique city like Las Vegas where the strip can sometimes um, seem like it's bigger than, than, than downtown, but this is where it started. Yeah. Um, and even when we were going through, you know, our concept and trying to figure out what statement we wanted to make, it was really bringing back the downtown vibe, bringing back the history that we all know. Most people, when they come to Vegas, they don't leave the strip. They don't know what local businesses are there. Yeah. They're here like 48 hours because that's all they can handle. But we want to show people that, you know, downtown is a place that you can go to connect with locals. Uh, it's a place that you can spend under $18 on a cocktail, and it just feels different. When I lived in New York, my office was on, in Midtown on 55th okay. and 6th, but okay. I lived in Brooklyn. Got it. And I loved Brooklyn. Brooklyn is, you know, where I had my cheers. That was, you know, a lot of the inspiration, you know, between my family and I coming together, but also our experiences in other cities. We knew that we didn't have that type of spot where we can go in and everyone literally, like, we can't social distance here <laughs> without constantly telling people because everyone knows each other and that's a really awesome feeling like what bars do you go into in las vegas in 2020 and you walk in and you know at least 10 people there that's cool man yeah. that, that's a really good thing to be able to happen and then also be able to network you know what i mean that's, that's what i love yeah it's organic yeah that's that's really cool I'm, I'm glad you guys have been able to overcome the just being in business for five years you know what i mean that's that's one accomplishment right off the bat it's very difficult to you know to be able to beat that so pretty cool so you guys are a family-owned business so you mentioned is it four of you guys total is it your sister also so my sister so selena her name is selena she's a flight attendant so she's rarely ever in town before so when i was in new york i was doing the back and forth a little kind of dragging my heels a little bit. I like, I like my salary. I love New York. And so my sister, uh, my mother, Cherie, and my business partner, Jerome, they are the, really the ones that got the ball rolling. They're the ones that handled, you know, uh, applications for liquor license and all, all of that. Mm-hmm. So it, it definitely is a family business. Like I mentioned before, my mother owns Vegas Living Realty, which is a, a brokerage firm. She's been in real estate over 30 years. And she's pretty much been my inspiration in entrepreneurship because she's just been doing it all my life. And just to see the freedom that, that has come with it and what she's been able to do for us. And then meeting her husband, who's my business partner, Jerome, has been awesome because he is definitely, I'm, I'm definitely the business in the front and he's the party in the back. Gotcha. And you need, you need that dynamic. Uh, both Rome and I, we, we left our jobs and we committed 100% to Classic Jewel. He's the reason why we have this whole other side. Yeah. He's the reason why we have food coming. I'm the reason why the bills probably get paid. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> why we keep our overhead low. So yeah. you, need that, you need that balance. And then, you know, my mom, we call her the big boss. Cause she's just the one that, you know, it doesn't matter if it's business, it doesn't matter if it's personal. She's that one that you're looking to for like approval in life. Like she's that's just, cool. <laughs> you know, that's awesome. That's a great thing to be able to have happen when you've got that creativity of everything going on. And then mm. some of the events that you guys have been able to do, like I've seen, it's just really cool vibes from 
you know, live entertainment to, you know, wine. You know, I saw you guys doing Wine Wednesdays and I saw you guys doing karaoke. So you guys are keeping it really uh, creative, you know, seven days a week, which is very hard to do. And, yeah. and that's, that's pretty cool. What should people expect for the food coming up? What kind of food are you guys going to be serving? So Can you let the cat out the are- bag yet or... Oh, yeah. We have a menu. And as much as we wanted to go into, you know, a lot of the, the, the fresh the quinoa salads and the, yeah. at the end of the day, when you're at a bar, I don't care if you're drinking martinis or if you're throwing beers back, you want French fries, yeah. you want tacos, sliders, wings, flatbread. So we're going to definitely stay true to, to the bar cuisine. We want to yeah. make sure that, you know, you have a, a reason to get another drink. So you can stay thirsty. But what we'd like to do with everything is just try to do our, put our own spin on it. You know, right now we're in different times right now in terms yeah. of what we can do and what's safe. Um, so I'm looking forward to going through that process with my partners and, and picking out the, the right things. But for now, we're going to stick to those traditional bar items. And what kind of challenges have you seen trying to roll that out? Because it seems like a whole different dynamic to go from, you know, bar to, to food. That's a... Yeah. It's like a whole extra avenue of challenges. <laughs> yes, it is. It's definitely, I thought it was a little too ambitious, but my business <laughs> partner has, has pretty much taken the reins with that. We were doing the food trucks out front, which is mm-hmm. great, but you know, you have to start looking at things. We have to start thinking about how we're leveraging our space. We just purchased here, so we're not going anywhere. Any oh, congratulations. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, you purchased Thank it. You. Yeah, that's a big difference, yeah. man. You purchase versus lease. That's that's powerful. Right. So you think about the things differently. You know, you think about, okay, well, you know, merch, right? You think about food, you think about leveraging private events, you think about leveraging sponsorship opportunities. Uh, you just have to think now at 50% occupancy, what is the low-hanging fruit? Right? What are we currently not doing? What trees do we need to shake down in order to survive? And food is one of those things. So even though it's it's challenging, even though, you know, this is like probably the worst time to roll something like that out, it's going to be rewarding for us because we'll be able to keep our doors open. And the first three months, you know, when we were shut down, we couldn't, we could not make a dollar because we didn't have, you know, we didn't have food. We didn't have anything set up. So today we had a, a really great inspection. I'm super excited. It's finally happening. You know, we're, we're now going to be able to, to make some revenue off of food. We love our food trucks. We're definitely going to keep them in circulation, but there's yeah. nothing like seeing that revenue staying in-house. Yeah, I'm not mad at you. Yeah, yeah I can understand right. it. And that's, that's <laughs> so that's the motivation. You know what's cool is you brought up, everybody's been talking about pivoting, and you're showing that you're a true entrepreneur. I'm very happy that we had you come on the show because you're showing with you and your partners how to pivot, how to transition, how to reinvent yourself. And a lot of people need to hear that, especially with the energy right. you guys are having. And I, and I also got to say, you guys have got great customer service inside your Jewel. Thank you. you know what I mean, they want they want to treat you right when you're coming in. Hey, what's going on? It's not no negative energy. It's, hey, man, what's going on? How you feeling? What can I get you? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's, it's a real, real cool vibe. You guys did a, a great job uh, with that. Thank you. Sure. We have the best team. We have the best team. And I want to make sure I take this moment to, to thank them. I mean, this isn't. This is not an easy experience. You know, this is so tough. I think about our team all the time, their families. We're not dealing with a lot of the the issues that some people are dealing with, people not willing to come back to work, not wanting to come back to work. Our team is ready. They're here. They are family. And so it's a really cool dynamic to know that, um, you know, that, that sense of loyalty as a young entrepreneur, it lets me know that something is being done right. Yeah. Because that, that's what you think about. Those are the things that keep me up at night. You know, how, how does my team feel? Um, am I being mindful of the things that they're going through? Am I being a leader? You know, like there, there's just certain things that I was not, you know, coming from corporate America, we don't always talk about how we can be there for each other, you know, mentally, financially. This has been quite the crash course for me yeah. on empathy what's urgent versus what's important. It's, it's been a lot, it's been a yeah. lot. Well, you just said it, that leadership is, is everything in entrepreneurship yeah. and running a business is, is leading. Let me ask you this, what is your favorite drink on your menu? Mm. So if you were to come in there, what, what's the favorite drink that, that you would recommend or you drink? Okay, so what I would recommend, well, first, I'm sure our team would ask, 
what your spirit preference is. Okay, got it. Um, got it. So I think, marketing. I think That's we got to start. Good vodka. Vodka. <laughs> so I'm not a big vodka drinker, but if I were, I would definitely go for like a dirty martini. I'm more of the savory than the sweet. In my cocktails, like right now, I'm drinking an Aperol spritz. I'm not really into the, the sweet stuff. If, if you ask anyone on my team, they'll tell you that I like a skinny margarita with extra lime. <laughs> there you go. So okay. I'm, I'm like, I'm no fun when it comes to that. But what I would recommend is if you want like a, a, a nice balanced cocktail with something a little bit different, I would recommend ordering a Brandy Cresta, which is a cognac based cocktail, but it is, it just hits every time. It's super smooth. If you feel like you've had all the classics and you want to shake it up, I challenge you to try the Brandy Cresta. If you like dark, if you like cognac, like that would be what I would recommend. We get a lot of folks that already know what they want to drink. So I try to challenge them like, okay, well, if you like, you know, if you like tequila, let's try something else. And I don't, I'm, I'm the, the least qualified of our bartending team to make a cocktail. I'm so thankful that Rome and I are not back there making cocktails for you guys because they would not be the same. Gotcha, yeah. I would say a Brandy Cresta um and then if you're you know if you just like vodka i would definitely rec recommend just a, a, a dirty martini because our, our bartenders they do a good job what's something one thing i do gotta ask is how do you control your temptation owning a bar i feel like if i had a bar i would be drinking nonstop. <laughs> oh, I, know, I know you know what so working in sports okay so let me even rewind being a Sun Devil, going to the number one party school in the nation yeah that helps <laughs> you gotta start learning you know prioritizing, you know, as you get older, you realize you have a lot to do in the morning. So sometimes it's not even maturity that catches up. It's your body telling you. This <laughs> is work. So between that, working in sports, working in the ad business, which in New York City, I was young in my 20s with an Amex and I was in, in, in responsible for client entertainment four or five times a week. So oh, yeah. with that, I got it out your system. Yeah, <laughs> got, out I got, got it done early. And when you think yeah. about costs, I'm pretty frugal. <laughs> I'm pretty frugal. So when I think about cocktails, even when our when our team is like trying to make me something, I'm like, oh no, use the well, use the well. To, uh, <laughs> don't don't reach up too high because it sounds expensive. So I think that 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 helps. You know, just like with any restaurant, you know, you can love. You can love the shrimp tacos and you can have them every single day, but at some point it's going to catch up to you. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm definitely on, I like champagne. I'm, I'm, I'm known to have mocktails around here. I have the, the team, they put my, my club soda and lime in, in champagne flutes. Good <laughs> so stuff. I do a lot of fake shots when people come and they want to buy shots. You said fake so, shots. <laughs> a lot of fake shots. Yeah, so that's I'm not smart. at all. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you. Look, you own it. That's also your money too. So that, that's that there's part, money in the glass. That part so. right there. That 100%. is another, got a, another quick question. Do you get a lot of people that buy on the top shelf? Because I always see those bottles and I'm like, who actually buys that? <laughs> we do. So most of our neighbors, so to live at Jewel, it's it's not cheap. I love yeah. living here. I moved here from New York. I like the amenities. We have great great pool with cabanas. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a good spot to be in. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, we do have a pretty nice clientele that knows what they want to drink. We have a lot of Scotch drinkers. We have a lot. Uh, yeah, we actually have most people looking to the top shelf, oh, wow. uh, which is great. <laughs> and something else that we never saw ourselves doing is bottle service. That is such a Vegas thing. We wow, never thought that we were going to be doing that, but we, we do a lot of bottle service. So that was surprising. So folks are doing a lot of top shelf purchases. We appreciate that. I will never discourage them <laughs> from popping yeah. bottles. For but it sure. could be yeah. on Wednesday night and, you know, we can sell five, six bottles of Moe. I mean, that oh. that's, at one point, that was pretty normal for Wine Wednesdays. That's awesome. Hey, yeah. that's a good, good, that's a good business to be in. <laughs> if exactly. You're, you're I miss business, those so. days. We miss yeah. those days. So we're hoping, we're hoping to get back there real soon. So tell us, too, because we asked everybody this, what is your favorite restaurant in Las Vegas? Ooh. See, this is tough. Because I moved here from New York, yeah. there's a lot of the same restaurants Fair from enough. New York here That's on true. the strip. Yeah. 
So, you know, we've got Tal and Lavo and Beauty and Essex, but Nomad. Nomad. Okay. Let me tell you about Nomad. So I don't, yep. I don't really eat chicken anymore. I dabble every now and then. But when I did, they have, I had it in New York. It's like a $100 or $150 chicken. Oh, and they wow. bring it out to you. They bring it out to you. It's like stuff with a bunch of herbs. Like they're modeling this, this prize bird. <laughs> Yeah, and okay. take it in the back and when they bring it out it is the most perfect it is absolutely perfect that i just have so much respect for the process that someone cares that much <laughs> so yeah. i haven't had it in so long and that's probably why i miss it yeah, but yeah. i'll probably have to go with nomad that would we haven't had anybody say nomad yet yeah, so that's that's, that's good that's oh, awesome. it's the only place i'm like craving because <laughs> i haven't <laughs> park MGM. that's at park mgm correct it is. It okay, is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I haven't been there yet, so that's good. That's good to put that on the map. So get the we're bird. To... Oh, you have to get the bird and let me know because, like I said, they're going to bring it out. They're going to model it for you. That's probably it. Yeah. That's, that's good stuff. And it's probably the most expensive piece of chicken that you'll, you'll ever well, You said $150, then yeah. Yeah, that's oh, a lot for chicken. Yeah. <laughs> better have some well, damn gold said, in the I chicken. Don't know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's my favorite. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's my favorite, but it is right now. Like, if someone were to be like, just Let's live go. it up. Yeah. That would yeah. be that would be what I would be getting right now. Good stuff. Okay, so we got we'll put that one on there. So that's 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 great stuff. What's next for you guys? Now, obviously, we got the food coming on the menu. Mm -hmm. Obviously, trying to reopen and hopefully get back to this phase three, you know, real yeah. soon. What's kind of y'all's goal? Uh, I know this is un uncertain circumstances, but no, what's y'all's no, goal? You know, over the next year, you know, five years. It's awesome to know you guys purchase versus lease. So that mm -hmm. that changes the game. Yeah, it uh, does. No, that's a great question. Really, right now, the transition is coffee shop vibe. So, like, coffee to cocktails. So, I'm working on right now more so a, a workspace. So, oh, awesome. kind of going back to the business in the front, party in the back, but a space where, um, you know, all those folks that are working from home, all these young entrepreneurs that are yeah. looking for a, a space to be able to, to collectively, you know, get together, whether it's peer mentorship, whether it is, you know, just coffee, you know, in yeah. the middle of the workday. So what we've noticed is um, there are a ton of really awesome coffee shops opening up downtown. I'm a big supporter of, you know, um, C3 and Makers and Finders. Like I love those, those spots, but we really don't have any representation that I know of um, and within the black community for black owned uh, coffee shops. So yeah. what we wanted to do is we wanted to kind of combine like the need in addition to working with some of the, the businesses that are already down here, like the, like the Stacy's with Simply Pure and sure. figure out a way to how, how can we invite them down? How can we get our lounge space during the day to be more of like a workspace, more of a collective networking space? I personally want to focus on, on, on young women. That's my personal calling. Um, it's super important for me to make room for, for other women that look like me in mm -hmm. this business. As I've been navigating through, it's it's definitely been interesting. Um, yeah, it's yeah, been yeah. fun, but there's definitely a need for diversity. So I just want to, you know, figure out how I can use my lane, you know, how I can use my platform better. And I know my business partner, I mean, he's, he's invested in a couple other upcoming projects downtown. So I'm super excited about that. Things were a little bit on hold with everything that was going on. But I think what you can expect from Classic Jewel is more live music. We're going to get back to that probably around four times a week. Okay. Workspace, daytime workspace, coffee. But most of those coffees will probably have a little Bailey's. There you little, go. Yep. Little Cuban rum. We're going to definitely change the game up a little bit. Um, and then just also a lot more community involvement. This was our second uh, peaceful protest bike rally. We're going to be doing another one next month with Quiet Storm. And then also just, you know, food, just a, a space for folks to just come in, hang out. We all miss that sense of, you know, camaraderie, that sense of community. Um, so just really getting back to that. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's something to look forward to. I, I definitely will be back for the live music. Yes, sure. please that do. Everybody's just waiting to, to get out of the house. So yeah, it's, I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know, Pocky. I'll come with you. Yeah, we're going we yes, to definitely make please. that happen. Let me know. Let me know. I would love sure. to host you guys here. And, and I know you guys aren't in the studio right now, but if, if it gets back to that point, you guys want to do yeah. a live remote, 
please do it here. I would love to, to have you yeah, on. Yeah, we're going to definitely have to because I saw, the, yeah, I saw the spot in the back, man. It's, it's oh, pretty yeah, cool. Oh, yeah, we have the stage. Yep. And yep. that's part of the, the other thing that we want to be able to offer with people in workspaces. You know, are you, you know, do you need a little selfie station? Do you need a podcast set up? Do you need to meet with a grant writer? Do you need, you know, we want to be able to match people with resources that they need. And the cool thing about it is we don't have to look far because so many people come here yeah. to do that already. So now it's just really just matching people up together that I don't know if you've ever had friends or colleagues and you're like, you really need to know this person. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you don't. You know this so much with doing this podcast. It's yeah, like, definitely. We've <laughs> had so many people behind the scenes where they're just like, no, you need to connect this right. person. This is who you need to have come on. And, uh, it's pretty cool. It's, it's a pretty cool experience. So we definitely will have to connect in the future for sure. Yes. What you guys are doing is so awesome. I've seen uh, multiple friends that I look up to, you know, yeah. whether it's, uh, you know, the, the Marcus Banks of the world, the CJ Watson, yeah. the Carl, you know, like you guys have had a lot of Stacy. You've yeah. had a lot of folks that, that I personally look up to awesome. on your show. So when you reached out, I was I was super honored and appreciative awesome. to be able well, to talk to We had to have Classic Jewel on, man. We had to oh, have yeah. you guys on. Yeah, we had oh, to have yeah. you guys on because they support your business too, which is which is awesome. Yeah, so, thank you. Um, but definitely, where can people check you guys out? Can you can you shout yeah. out like your social medias and everything? Absolutely. And how they can book events and stuff with you? Absolutely. So you can go to our website, www.classicjewellv.com. You can book events there. You can book, uh, you can see what events we have going on, photos. Um, And if you want to just kind of stay engaged with us, you can, uh, on social media, you can find us. Our Facebook is just Classic Jewel. And then our uh, Instagram is Classic Jewel LV. Awesome. Well, you guys got to check her business out, man. Support the locals, man. Yes. Support, it. Support it for sure. Check her out. And they're off of Bonneville, correct? Yes. We're on 3rd and Bonneville in the Jewel High Rise. There you go. Awesome. Man. We appreciate you hanging out with us, Ryan. Yeah, Thank Ryan. You. That was great. Thank you. Thank you.